Now, the EFF has threatened to stage a sit-in at all vaccination centers if President Cyril Ramaphosa does not give a concrete plan on how he will vaccinate the nation by the end of April 2021. This comes after Ministers William Kieser announced that the second phase of the vaccine rollout program will commence next month. Well, let's take you to EFF MP Naledi Chirwa, who joins me now. Naledi, good evening and thank you so much for your time tonight. Firstly, what... Good evening, Kathy. Thanks for having me. Sure. What are the demands that you are making as a party so that we can be clear on what it is that you want um, before you actually go ahead with this protest? I mean, primarily what the economic freedom fighters is calling for is the right to quality health care, as enshrined in our constitution, the Bill of Rights. We're wanting the vaccine. People must have a variety of choices to choose from, and that it must be accessible on request and on demand, and that has not happened. We have seen promises and commitments being done by the NDOH, being done by the president, being done by Minister Berlin Mkise, and none of them have manifested. In fact, you should call for general uh, concern over the country because each and every target that they have said over the past few months hasn't manifested. In fact, it's not something that starts with COVID. It's a general crisis from the NDOH uh, that sees the regression of the NDOH in the public health care sector regressing. And that has costed us lives. That's costed us jobs. And the fact that we are in a position right now as a country to procure and secure vaccinations, but that is not happening because of bias, because of lack of political win. It then forces us as economic from to step in as a vanguard of the proletariat, as a, van as a protest movement in South Africa to ensure that quality health care is not just a, a rhetoric that's thrown around in press conferences, in media press conferences, and lies and miscommitments being made to the nation that are not being fulfilled by the government. We have seen people everywhere adhering to uh, COVID-19 regulation protocols, wearing their masks, social distancing. People have lost their livelihoods, lost their jobs. Uh, but the government is failing to keep that end of the stick in, in ensuring that quality health care vaccinations reach the country and each and every citizen has a quality, uh, an opportunity to choose which vaccine they want. Uh, and especially because we have relationships uh, with Russia and China, they've even approached the government. Uh, in the process of vaccination, for, Minister of the Ministry has stepped to the Portfolio Committee of Health that he has spoken to various manufacturers, but the problem is that none of these engagements are resulting in the procurement of vaccines. And because vaccination as a primary health care tenant is something that is the mandate of the NGOH, and it is not happening, that is why the economic freedom fighters, we are taking to the streets, going to all the vaccination sites across the country to ensure that our voices are heard firstly, and that vaccines are procured and delivered to South Africa, to our citizens, to the people living in South Africa, because COVID pandemic is not leaving anytime soon. And we have lost too much as a country, and we should start holding the government accountable. The, the administration of Cyril Ramaphosa must be held accountable into why they have not procured and ensure that vaccinations are secured for the country as they had promised in February and January. Now, Lady, I'm looking at Julius Malema's tweet from earlier on, and basically he says that um, the president needs to provide a concrete plan on how he'll vaccinate the nation by the end of April. Now, you've spoken about the multiple briefings that Minister Zulim Kize would have also given before Parliament about um, their, their actual plan as the department. And in fact, those are some of the briefings that have contained the most details about um, where government is at in terms of its own planning around the vaccination. Do you feel that that information has not been enough? Oh, it has definitely not sufficed, uh, Cathy, because on numerous occasions, the Minister of Health has appeared before Portfolio Committee of Health, even provinces for that matter, to present their plan on how they prepared or are preparing to do the, ro the rollout uh, vaccination program. This was supposed to start in March, as per the plan that was presented in the Health Portfolio Committee, but it has not started. We are still doing a trial in South Africa, the Johnson & Johnson vaccine trial. Pfizer has been uh, given uh, permission to do uh, to actually be rolled out of South Africa, but it has not been secured. And another issue is the fact that these plans are not something that are materializing, because initially the plan was to vaccinate 1.5 million healthcare workers by the end of April. It is almost the end of April now, or we are nearing the end of April, and not even half a million of healthcare workers have been vaccinated. In fact, the NDOH has then changed their plan to say, okay, we're no longer doing 1.5 million. We have failed. 
to vaccinate 1.5 million healthcare workers by the end of April into May, we are now moving on to 600,000 healthcare workers, having uh, their initial targets and also increasing the time frame. And even that, knowing the, the history of the NGOH, knowing the fact that they have, a, they, have a, they have a reputation for not even concluding their targets as a department and have, they have been regressing for the past two years, as according to the Auditor General, it is not something that we should be enthusiastic about as a country because, once again, they will prove to us that they will fail. And it is not so, enough so, so, to so, plan so. to vaccinate 600,000 healthcare workers by the end of May with a trial at that. It's not even a so, 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 just looking back at what the minister has said in the last two weeks, um, and this yes. goes just beyond the Susanke protocol that you are referencing. He said that they've procured Johnson & Johnson vaccines, I believe it's about 20 million of them, and they have concluded the contract with Pfizer. So you are saying that part of the reason why you're raising issue with the process that has been undertaken so far is that there has been no securing of vaccines. Now we understand that the contracts have been signed. That's one of the things that the minister has um, confirmed in the last two weeks. What we don't know is when exactly those vaccines are going to arrive. And there are multiple reasons for that. And it has to do with the global supply chain issues as well. So how much of that do you take in and do you consider um, when it comes to just the issues that are within the department's control and the serious issues that they have to account for, but those that are also not within their control? Um, Kathy, first of all, vaccine nationalism is not something that we can blame forever. There have been various manufacturers, as per the admission of Minister Zilin Kize, who have actually approached our government uh, in making sure that they get the vaccinations, should they secure them. And also, there's a difference between procuring vaccines and securing vaccinations. Right now in the country, we are dealing with the issue of, of uh, securing vaccines and not the actual procurement of vaccines. Johnson & Johnson is doing a trial in South Africa. So even if they would give vaccinations tomorrow, they would have to first conclude the trial and be given permission by SAPRA to continue the vaccination. That has not happened. Pfizer has gotten permission to, uh, to, uh, to, to have their vaccine rolled out in South Africa. And even the securing of the Pfizer vaccine has not happened. Another issue that we are raising at the EFS is that we cannot so, be so, so when, when you say when you say secure the vaccine... Let me just finish, Kathy. Let me just finish. No, I, I just wanted Another to explain. Raising, when you talk about securing the vaccine and procuring, why do you read the two as being different? Because if we're told that the, the contracts for the procurement deals have been signed, does that not secure a certain amount of supply for the country? Is that not how you see it? The difference that I'm raising in mm. relation to securing and procuring vaccines. Procurement means you've already paid for vaccines. And then securing means you are still in negotiations and dealing and signing and all those things, but the money has not come out yet. That is the crisis that we are facing in South Africa currently. But another issue that we are raising as the economic from Pfizer is that we cannot be held uh, to choose just between two manufacturers. People must have access to quality health care and also have choice as, as per se. We have relationships with Russia and China who are also having vaccinations that are very high rate. Uh, uh, in their efficacy that has also been presented in the Portfolio Committee of Health, but they are not being secured by the NGOH. And another thing, if you're going to raise the issue of nationalism, of vaccine nationalism, then you must also look at the fact that why aren't other manufacturers brought into the procurement process? We want Sputnik as well. We want all these other vaccines that are being given out that have efficacy against the variety that was first found in South Africa. But that is not happening because there's also a political bias that is taking place in relation to manufacturers. And that puts the lives of South Africans in danger. We can't be subjected to choosing between two vaccines uh, that, of people that have relationships to the, uh, the current executive, Osir Ramaphosa and Ozil Mkize, while in the meantime they are refusing to still open uh, their bank statements so we can still donate to their, to their, to their uh, presidential campaigns and all of that. And and and, 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 and lady, in South uh, Africa currently... Yeah is much more bigger than just securing vaccines. And also, it is not a, it is not a privilege, Kathy, to, to, to the quest to find the vaccines and to also request and demand vaccines. It is a constitutional obligation of the executive to ensure that quality health care 
prevention and primary health care are mandatory and an objective in the NGO age in the public health care sector. That has not happened in the past year and over a year at that. From preparing the public health care sector, we said Minister Dillon was coming to us telling us that the public health care sector was ready for the COVID pandemic, but that was not the case. And we saw thousands of people dying out because of that a misconception that was spread by the administration of Sir Ramaphosa. And even beyond that, the issue of procuring and securing vaccines is not an issue that starts now. Minister of the Olympics was already talking with manufacturers from June 2020. And to date, we have not secured enough vaccines to ensure that everybody, each and every citizen, is able to get a vaccine on request. And at the very least, that there is a concrete plan on how to vaccinate the threshold of 57% people by the end of the year. As we have already heard that they will already fail on their objective as well. So there is a crisis. It is not a crisis that just lingers in the air. It's a crisis that ends up in lives being lost. It is a crisis that ends up with people losing their jobs, with people not being able to participate and continue uh, in the economic hub and continue with their lifestyles and their livelihoods. So it is not just an issue of having to be tolerant with the executive. There is no need and no time to be tolerant with an executive that refuses, that fails to do its objective as the government. All, right. All the responsibility of responding to the COVID pandemic has been placed on the people. We have been wearing masks. We have been sanitizing. We have been social distancing. We have even lost our jobs as a community, as a society, as a country. But the government has not stuck to their end of their obligation of ensuring that primary health care Quality healthcare, as enshrined in our constitution, is something that is realized All during right. this pandemic. Now, lady, we're going to have to leave it there for tonight. Now, lady Chirwa, she is an EFF MP.